even though I don't have $14,000, I entered $14,000. I'll tell you how. Because I attended an immigration seminar with my university. Um, I took notes. So I have all my notes and according to that, we're going to go through section by section and I'm going to tell you some do's and don'ts. Hello everyone, welcome and welcome back to Piyush Canada. This video will be delivered in English because I want this video to benefit all international students who are in Canada. So in this video, I'm specifically going to talk about how to extend your study permit once you are inside Canada. You might have your own reasons to extend your study permit. My reason is that my course is ending on the same day that my study permit is ending. So that's the reason I need to extend my study permit. Another reason could be that your course is taking longer to finish as compared to your original study permit duration. So you might have your own reason to extend your study permit. In this video, I'm going to cover how to extend your study permit once you are inside Canada and how to extend your co-op work permit once you are inside Canada. I'm going to cover both. So without wasting any time, let's dive right into the video. So the first thing that you want to do, you want to go to the website called Canada.ca. You'll see a page like this. You want to click on Immigration and Citizenship. Once you go to that page, you will see a lot of options. You want to click on Study. Okay, apply apply for or extend a study permit or work permit. Okay, once you click on that page, you will see a page like this. Click on apply online for a study permit, the red one that you see. Once you're on that page, you will see a page like this. I'm gonna assume all of you have a GC key login. If you don't talk to the person who applied your study permit in the first place, it is impossible that you are in Canada and you don't have GC key logins. Okay. So GC key is the portal where you use to apply all your Canadian study work, um, you know, all applications. So I'm going to assume that you have your GC key login set up. You're going to click on sign in with GC key. Once you click on sign in with GC key, you'll see a page like this. I have blurred out all my details for obvious reasons. Um, any application that you have submitted in the past that was approved, rejected, whatever happened, that will appear here under one portal. So as you can see, my latest application that I submitted was February 10th. That was my study permit extension. So we are going to go through the whole process. Okay? So once you once you are on that page, scroll down a little, you will see a page that says start an application. Okay, you're going to click on apply to come to Canada, even though you are already in Canada, but you're still going to click on apply to come to Canada. Once you click there, you'll see a page like this. It will ask you, do you have a reference code from a previous application or you want to start a new application? Of course, we are going to say, I don't have a reference code. I want to start a new application. So you're going to click on visitor visa, study permit or work permit. Okay? You're going to click on the first option. Once you click on that option, you'll see there's a questionnaire to be filled even before you can start an application. Everything that you see here is very personal to your current situation, but let's go through it. So once you click on what would you like to do in Canada, click study. Um, how long are you planning to stay in Canada? No matter. Now, here's the quick tip. No matter if you want to extend your study permit for 15 days, one month, three months, six months, one year always select more than six months always select more than six months you don't know uh, what the situation might be it's the same exact process to extend it for more than six months or less than six months just just select more than six months make everyone's lives easier the next question is select the code that matches your passport it's of course your country what is the current country of residence if presently in canada select canada of course you are applying from inside canada you're going to select canada do you have a family member or a canadian citizen pr um, of course the answer answer might be different to your case in my case this was no um, the next option is what is your date of birth select your date of birth and click next once you click next, you'll be asked a question. Are you, um, uh, do, uh, do you have a US citizenship? In my case, I did not. You select no and click continue. On the next page, you'll see what is your current immigration status in Canada. So of course you're watching this video. So your current status in Canada is a student. So you're going to click student and click next. What is your marital status? Again, really depends on your situation. Select whatever applies to you. Now, once you go through all of that, you'll see a page like this. So what you want to do, you want to extend your study permit first. We are going to extend our TRV later, right? This video is specifically tailored to only and only extending your study permit. So click on study permit in Canada and click continue. You're going to see a page like this. Just keep hitting continue until you see a page like this. So now this is a, this is a technical question. It says, are you accompanying a family member who has a status in Canada? Even though, even though, for example, my sister is in Canada, right? Uh, even though she is in Canada, I have a family member in Canada. I am not accompanying her. Accompanying her means that you both applied together as one application, okay? And you are responsible for the other person, which I did not. She has her own, you know, um, status. I have my own status. So even though I have a family member here, she is not accompanying me. So you're gonna say no. Nobody is accompanying me unless somebody is actually accompanying you. 
do you also want to apply for a work permit so here's the catch if you have a co-op work permit and you want to extend your co-op work permit along with your study permit you select yes i want to extend my co-op work permit in my case i do have a co-op work permit but i don't want to extend my co-op work permit i just want to extend my study permit so i selected no here if you select yes i want to extend my co-op as well it's going to ask you to prove that uh, that uh, it's going to ask you for documents regarding your co-op so you know select accordingly when does your status in canada expire so if on if you go on to your study permit you'll see um, date of expiry whatever date your study permit expires that is your date of expiry that is when your status in canada expires so according to your situation enter whatever whatever that date is have you had a medical exam performed by ircc in my case in the last 12 months since uh, i've been in canada for almost two years so i have not had a medical exam in the last 12 months i'm gonna select no once you select now, it's going to ask you are, you, are you related to any of these jobs? So if you are a medical professional, if you are studying, um, you know, a course regarding uh, medical in Canada, you will probably have to take a medical test. If not, just select, I don't fit into any of these categories, just select next. Do you want to submit an application for a family member? In my case, no, I selected no, move ahead. Um, are you giving someone access to your application? In my case, I am not giving anyone access to my application. I am not um, using an immigration agent or anyone. I'm just gonna select no. In the past 10 years, have you given your fingerprints and photo to come to Canada of course when you applied for your study permit you give your biometrics you take a picture um, by going to the uh, uh, immigration office the VFS office so I did I selected yes will you be paying your fees you select yes um, are you able to make digital copies you select yes um, will you be paying your fees online do you have a credit card keep clicking next until you see this page now this is where the real uh, information starts up till then we were just filling a questionnaire to find out if we are eligible to apply. The form has decided that yes, we are eligible to apply. This is where you really, really want to stick the deal till the end of the video because I attended an immigration seminar with my university. Um, I took notes, so I have all my notes and according to that, we are gonna go through section by section and I'm gonna tell you some do's and don'ts. So first document that you see is your IMM 5709 that has to be filled completely. Um, this is where they will the immigration officer will get their information to assess click on opens in a new window this document will not open in any other uh, program other than adobe acrobat reader so get your adobe acrobat reader and get on to it first option is you see very basic uci number it's mentioned on your study permit um, select your language of service so what you want to select here is apply for a study permit. So if your study permit has not expired and is about to expire, so you're going to select apply for a study permit for the first time or extend my study permit. Okay. Again, scroll down, family name, given name, all of those apply to you. Have you used any other name? I selected no. Then you scroll down, you will see move to point number seven. Okay. Fill all your necessary details. Now so select point number seven. It will ask your current country, enter it as Canada. It will ask your current status, enter as student. Now it will ask you from and to. From and to is printed on your study permit. If you see your study permit, it will say, um, when does your study permit start? It's your date of entry into Canada. And then whenever your study permit is expiring. So here you're gonna select the date when your study permit is expiring. During the past five years, except for your country of citizenship and Canada, have you lived anywhere else? Um, I selected no because I was in Canada. Again, very basic details, your marital status, blah, blah, blah. Select according to your own living situation. Again, have you previously been married? Select according to your own option. Um, just keep everything consistent. Languages, select your native language, blah, blah, blah. Now, something about national identity document. Um, you can use, I'm just specifically talking about Indian students. Um, every country has their national identity document, right? Except on top of your passport. So for Indians, there is an Aadhaar card. Um, if you see, just enter the number of your Aadhaar card. For Chinese students, there might be a different, you know, a, a country document, national identity document that is specific to your country. Just enter that. You don't need to enter an issue date or an expiry date. Um, if you have it on your card, please enter it. If you don't have it on your card, you can leave it blank as well. They don't ask you for an expiry date. Enter your contact information. Very basic again. This is the most important part. Coming to Canada, this is the, the most important part. We're going to go through it very slow one by one. Date and place of your original entry into Canada. 
this is where you did your immigration this is whichever airport you came through just write the name of the airport plain and simple you don't need to write port of entry or anything fancy just write vancouver airport the date your study permit was printed that that's the date that goes here the original purpose of coming to canada was studying your interest study now date and place of your most recent entry into canada so if you left canada you went to you know you traveled you uh, went outside canada just mention that was my last entry to canada mention the date right if you went to visit your parents blah 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 just enter the last date you entered into canada right i haven't left canada ever since i came here so that's now point number four it very important it says if applicable provide the most recent document number what that means is if you changed your document number so if you applied for a co-op work permit the number of your co-op work permit goes here right not your original study permit number if you did not apply for a co-op work permit your regular study permit is is being continued you enter the number of your study permit now where is the study permit number so if you see your study permit on the top right there is a number printed in black usually it starts with an f right um, for a study permit and similarly in your co-op work permit the number will be on the top it's a it's usually printed in black again very important part details of intended study in canada so people who are extending their study permit you will enter name of your school your you know level of study blah 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 now point number three point number two first of all dli number designated learning institute number um, go to the website of uh, designated learning institute canada you enter the name of your university or college there will be a designated learning institute number every institute has a uh, unique code you need to enter that code here now duration of expected study uh, when you see from you're going to enter today's date you're going to enter today's date okay from it will not accept any other date except for today's date even though you already have a permit for until you know what whenever your study permit is expiring you're going to enter today's date in from in two you're going to enter until when you need your study permit for so for example my study permit expires on let's say 1st of april for example and i'm extending it until august so i'm going to enter 30th of august right so in in the two portion you enter when your until when you need your study permit to be extended to make sense now again very important the cost of my studies will be now here uh, it's a little tricky here now tuition you're going to enter the fee for one or two semesters whatever is remaining for room and board um there is an index that the immigration officers look at it, i think i don't remember the name it's called living and you know some index according to that index you need 850 dollars per month to stay in canada okay that's what they expect you to have now for example if i'm extending my study permit for uh, four months so that is 850 multiplied by four whatever that is so that's the minimum that you need um, i had more funds so i entered four thousand dollars right but the minimum that you need to have uh, as funds is your 850 multiplied by the number of months you're extending your study permit to so my study permit expires in april and i'm extending it for four months so i entered as four thousand dollars other you can enter anything your books uh, you know whatever you enter you will have to prove it now funds available for my stay even though i don't have fourteen thousand dollars i entered fourteen thousand dollars i'll tell you how your tuition amount is 10000 which you have already paid that counts as available funds right so that that 10000 dollars is available and it has been paid to the university it has been it has been allocated to the right place if you have a job you will be getting a salary in the future let's say you get a salary of 1200 per month so you can count your potential salary as funds available for my stay right so 1200 multiplied by 4 that is your potential funds available for stay right you might not have it today but if you have a job that you can prove which we will get into later but if you have a job count your potential income as the next funds available for your stay now what is recommended of course it's recommended to have some bank balance in your account it's always always recommended because they're going to ask for your bank statements or a certificate of balance from your bank so i entered 10,000 plus 4,000 I entered 14,000 we're going to get into financial documents a little bit later but for now this is good uh, my expenses will be paid by you can select myself you can select parents you can select anything whatever you select you'll have to prove so I selected that the expenses will be paid by myself so I attached my pay stubs my bank statement right whatever you enter you'll have to prove right you need to have documents 
in addition to study permit, do you also want to apply for your work permit here? Now, um, if you want, if you also want to extend your co-op work permit along with your study permit, you're gonna select yes. In my case, I did not want to extend my co-op work permit, so I selected no. Now, education. Have you had any post-secondary education, including university, college? So only enter what you have successfully completed. Currently enrolled does not count as completed, right? So I cannot enter that I am graduated from Thompson Rivers University, right? So I selected yes, and I filled my last graduation that I completed in 2016, right? I entered the, the level of study that I have successfully completed, all right? They already know that since you're extending your study permit, that means you still haven't finished studies, so you cannot enter it. Employment, very important again. You don't want to hide any employment. Whatever employment you have had in Canada, even if you have had simultaneous employment, just enter it, right? Enter that you're currently employed. This really, really works in your favor, right? So enter everything honestly. You don't want to hide anything. You don't want to, even though that job was not the best job, not your dream job, blah, blah, blah. They don't care. They do not care. They want the truth, okay? And they have all your details. They have your passport, study permit, SIN number. They have everything. They can find out anything about you if they want to. So there's no point hiding it. And the last section is really just a checklist. Um, just fill in whatever applies to you. In, in my case, none of this applied. Now, point number two, and if you see the point number C, it says, have you previously applied to enter or remain in Canada? I selected yes, because I did, right? I applied for my original study permit. So you're gonna enter yes, I have applied to, uh, you know, applied to come to Canada. And you're gonna write study permit approved on date this with document number this and application number this. So you're gonna say yes. Now, if you have ever had a visa rejected, if you, even though it was not a Canadian visa, if your US visa was rejected, if your um, you know, Europe visa was rejected, any visa that was rejected, you will enter it here, okay? On point number two, point number B, okay? So don't forget, just please don't hide anything from immigration. Just tell them the truth. Being truthful we may will make a better impression than you saying, no, I was not rejected, and then they find out. There is a, I think there is a pact that there's these five countries, I think US, New Zealand, Canada, US, they share all their immigration data together so they can really look you up if they want to. Fill everything as, as, as whatever applies to you. Now, once you come down, you're gonna click on validate. So once you click on validate, if you missed anything, if you uh, missed any important part, it's going to appear in red. So for example, in my case, I missed my from and to. So it will show me a red box that, hey, you missed this. It's It cannot, of course, it cannot check for correct or wrong information, but it will just tell you, hey, you missed this box, please fill this box, right? Now we are back to, now that form is filled, click on validate, save it, and just keep it. Now we are back to whatever documents are required. So let's go through it one by one. Uh, passport, so you're gonna scan the first page of your passport, second page of your passport, the original Canadian study visa that you were approved, then if you entered or exited Canada, a stamp for that, then any other visa that you have, every single visa that you have on your passport should be uh, scanned. So you're gonna scan your passport in that order, make it one file, that goes here. We're gonna uh, get into letter of acceptance later. Proof of financial means, I'm gonna talk about it later. Digital photo. You have spent $50,000 to get this Canadian degree or diploma, whatever you're doing. Um, please don't click a picture with your phone. Go to Staples, get a professional picture click. I mean, you can click a picture with your phone if you want to, nobody cares. But just make sure it's the right size. Where do you find out the size? You see this little question mark? It will show you the exact specification that they need. I went to Staples and I let the professionals do it. It costed me $20, $25. Let's talk about letter of acceptance and your proof of means of financial support that really make or break your application. Now, you're gonna email your university that I need a updated letter of enrollment, right? Every university or college has that option. My college has a drop-down menu where I can select what I want and they just generate the letter for you. This letter will say that you are a full-time student. This will state your program. This will state your expected uh, program end date. And this will also say that you have paid your fee for the upcoming semesters, right? So if you, if you read my letter, it says Piyush is doing this course, blah, blah, blah. Piyush has paid his fee. Piyush has, you know, his expected date is that. So make sure you get a letter like that from your university. Now, just below this letter, you want to attach your transcripts, right? Um, many times it happens that you, you submit an application and immigration gets back to you after a month that, hey, can you send us your transcript? Why do they need your transcript? 
they want to see that you have been making reasonable progress in your current course so just get an official transcript from your university of whatever current date uh, whatever subjects you have done it will show these subjects are done these subjects are in progress make sure you attach that document now for list of proof of financial support if you go back to that document page and just click on that question mark it will show you the list of documents that you can upload as a proof of means of financial support um, for me what I uploaded was a, a bank statement in my name that had my current bank balance um, that showed my bank balance that showed all my accounts blah 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 um, second I uploaded a proof of employment so if you uh, if you are employed you can tell your you can ask for a letter of employment from your employer which will state that you have been employed from this state at this position this is your hourly rate this is your uh, gross earnings this is this these are your gross earnings and this is approximately how much money you have made in the past year right so that really helps having a job and having an having a letter from your employer really helps and then a upload your pay stubs if you are employed do upload your pay stubs it really helps a lot I uploaded three months of my pay stubs although um, I was told to upload only two uh, I think I think one month or three pay stubs but I just put all you know last three months of pay stubs up there so so make a document of all these documents and on the first page you make a cover page like this and you enter that okay on page number one I have this page number two I have this and just just write hey I'm getting um, a regular income from my employer I've paid my full fee just make it just don't leave anything for guesswork right just write everything explicitly you want to make it super easy just make the life of whoever is your immigration officer just make their life easy right have give them everything in crisp clear format that hey I'm looking at this page this is what I'm looking at okay do you have sufficient funds available for the duration of my stay in Canada or relevant documents are attached right you don't want to leave anything abstract you don't want to leave anything ambiguous or or for them to guess just make everything to the point specific and under uh, if you scroll down further in your list of documents, you'll see there is a client information form which is optional you don't have to I chose to upload a document that why am I applying for a study permit extension here it goes um, this is the format that this is the exact format that I filled of course please don't copy my format make your own format um, just just modify this just don't blatantly copy it okay um, I'm currently pursuing this course at this university my expected graduation date is this and my current study permit is also expiring on this date I'm writing this letter regarding my study permit extension um, after graduation I will need four to six weeks to complete my uh, to get my documents from my university that's why I want to extend my study permit for 90 days and that's it and that's all the document that you need to apply for your study permit extension um, as of today of making this video on 12th of Feb 2023 the time limit for extending the processing time for extending your study permit when you're inside Canada is five weeks which is not uh, which is not bad I guess because outside Canada it's like more than three months so uh, five weeks is not that bad now if your study permit is expiring in April you want to apply for at least you want to apply three months in advance because if there is a problem it gets rejected you have time to rectify it right I am around 15 days late but I have still applied right now and like on the 10th of Feb and my study permit expires towards the end of April so I still have you know a sufficient amount of time you will have 60 days to complete your application you can start an application and decide to finish it tomorrow day after up till 60 days I would say collect all your documents make it a file and just go at it in one go now I will address a few questions can you work full-time because as you might as my international students would know that there has been a modification in the rules that if you applied your study permit before 7th of October you are allowed to work full-time until 31st of December 2023 now if you extend your study permit are you still able to work full-time answer is it depends it depends on what is depends on when do you apply for your study permit extension so now for example I applied for my study permit extension on the 12th of Feb I can only work full-time until my original study permit expires so let's say my original study permit expires on the 5th of April I can only work full-time till 5th of April starting 6th of April and until my new study permit I can only work part-time if you applied for your extension before 7th of October if you applied for your study permit before 7th of October 2022 yes you can work full-time but if you are extending your study permit after 
7th of October any time. You can only work full time for the duration of your original study permit that was approved before that was applied before 7th of October. I I know it's confusing, but I hope it makes sense. So I guess this was the most um, burning question that will you be able to work full time? Just to reiterate, um, you can work full time if you applied for your st original study permit before 7th of October. You can only work full time till your current study permit is expiring. Once you extend your study permit and your extension gets approved the new study permit starts from the date of original expiry up till so after the date of your original study permit expiry you cannot work full time right you're back to the 20 hours so make sure you keep all these factors in mind before you extend your study permit i hope all of you found this video helpful i tried my best to make a video on how i did it of course, many things will be different when you do it. You have your own specific situation. I would always suggest talk to your immigration advisor of your university or college before you even start an application, right? Um, thank you so much for watching this video. If you can subscribe, that would be a great help. It really motivates me to put out useful content like this. If you want to see latest pictures and videos from Canada or what am I doing with my life, you can also connect on Instagram. All right, thank you so much. Bye-bye, and I will see you in the next video.